Let's talk Jonathan Kaminga. 6'8, NBA ready body. He played for the G League Ignite, 18 years old. Very young prospect, very raw prospect. I'm your host, Andrew Schlecht. With me, I've got the draft guru, Sam Bassini. Sam, man, I, I sometimes I don't know what to think about Jonathan Kaminga. Can you help me? No. No, I mean, I mean, yes, but no, uh, I don't, I don't know what to think of Kaminga either. Uh, really interesting frame, six foot six, six foot seven, something like that, seven foot wingspan. Uh, obviously, physically ready to play. Like he showed up in the G League Ignite, and, uh, in the G League bubble, and was ready to go from day one. Right, just physically was ready to go. The thing is that the skill set, in terms of the shooting results, at least didn't really match up, uh, turned the ball over quite a bit, and then was very lackadaisical defensively in the way that you don't really want to see from a guy that you're going to take uh, potentially, you know, four, five, six in the NBA draft. So uh, fascinating player for a number of reasons, but uh, one that has questions, I think is a fair way to put it, just given the tape that we saw this year. Yeah. To me, one of the more intriguing things about him is just his overall story and his background. You know, growing up in Congo, coming over here at the age of 14, like kind of by himself. And yep. has, I don't know, I, I can't imagine the amount of like gumption this guy has. Like if you were to, if that were like a draft rating, I think he would have a lot of it just because of the life circumstances that he's had. But then you watch him and you're like, oh my gosh, it's been seven possessions and he hasn't been down in a defensive stance and like, Lord knows how long. And that really kind of should be one of his calling cards because physically he looks the part of an elite NBA defender. And then you watch him and he's just a little bit all over the place. He'll have a highlight play every once in a while where you're like, okay, wow, okay, there it is. And that's, and that's kind of the experience of watching him is where you're sitting there watching and you're like, okay, there it is. But then you lose it for a while with him. Uh, let's just let's just stay with defense. You know, where, where do you see him as an NBA defender? Who does he defend? What kind of trends have you seen? Well, it's so hard because this is a mindset thing at the end of the day with Kaminga, right? It's not a, you know, he, he doesn't lack the length. He doesn't lack the size. He doesn't lack the lateral quickness. He, uh, you could say maybe he does lack the instincts and awareness right now. Right. But like he has the tools to be really good defensively and he was just a disaster you know, with the Ignite. So uh, where do I rate it? I, I mean, bad right now. Like there's just not another way to put it. But, you know, you, you don't draft guys for what they are now when they're 19, 20 years old. You draft them for what they're going to be when they're 24, 25. And, Jonathan Kaminga has every tool that you look for to be very, very good defensively. Do I think Jonathan Kaminga is going to be a good defender? I have no idea if Jonathan Kaminga is going to be a good defender at the end of the day, right? Like, it's it, it's it's a gamble at the end of the day. Like, it's it's a gamble that you can make based on informed, uh, you know, information. That's really bad English, but like. It's a gamble you can make based off of real, uh, you know, tape that you've seen based on what you know about him physically and everything. But to say it's anything other than a gamble at this point, I think is foolhardy uh, for anyone that's trying to like predict, oh my God, right now, we know Jonathan Kaminga is gonna be this level defender. We don't have shit about how good of a defender Jonathan Kaminga is going to be at the end of the day. Like, <laughs> could be really good, could be really bad. Uh, we've seen, yeah. we've seen both at this point. Yeah, I mean, and you look at kind of the raw production from him. You know, almost 16 points per game, seven boards, yeah. 2.7 assists, a steal, almost a block per game. Like, oh wow, that seems great. And then you just check yep. out the shooting splits: 38. 24, 62, and you're like, oh, okay, uh, there's a problem there. And then you just kind of watch him, and there are times on the court where he's handling the ball, he takes a step back three, you're like, oh, wow, that's that's yep. that's the NBA, <laughs> great. He fits right in, and then you see him just take some of the worst shots, and you're like, what, like, what is he looking at? What does he see? Uh, and it's, it's just a frustrating experience, uh, and we can... Let's just talk fit because to me, this is 
it's a big deal with everybody. I don't want to downplay it for other players. But to yeah. me, this is going to determine the the outlook of his career. Yeah. Where does he go? He, like, where does he land? He needs to go somewhere that will hold him accountable. Uh, that's yeah. the number one thing, I think. Yeah. Needs to go somewhere where he has veterans around him who just won't, like, put up with the shit that he pulled defensively this year at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Like, get down defensive stance every time, man. Yep. Make those weak side rotations, not just when you have a chance at a block, because when he had a chance to block a shot, he was really good as a weak side rim protector. Uh, sure. It was like a see ball, go get ball kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But whenever he didn't have that kind of, you know, necessary, hey, I, I can go block this shot uh, thing, just wasn't, wasn't available. So yeah. I think he needs somewhere that will hold him accountable and has really good veteran leadership. Uh, from day one. I, I, that's like the number one thing that I'm, I'm just really hoping that Jonathan Kaminga ends up with. And like, at the end of the day, he needs to go somewhere that can iron out his shot mechanics is maybe the way to put it, right? Because mechanically, the shot does not look that bad. Uh, I think it actually looks pretty okay whenever he's shooting from a standstill. He's not a movement shooter right now. Like you can't run him off of screens and hope that he's gonna set. Um, can shoot a little bit off of pull-ups more from the mid-range area as opposed to the three-point line. Um, but if you just look at the shot, whenever he's spotting up from a wing or in the corner, it's pretty okay. It just didn't fall in the G League this year. So I would like to see him end up in a place that can continue to work with that and just iron out the standstill three-point shooting because I think he can be very good at that. Yeah. I've always, and I cover the Thunder, and there are a few places I feel comfortable. I feel kind of comfortable with them landing in Oklahoma City just because they only care about development, and that's where mm-hmm. they are today. They hired a coach, Mark Degnault, who, like, that's what he thinks about when he wakes up in the morning is developing NBA players. And yep. to me, that's, if he's going to have a chance, I think that's a good landing spot. And plus, he has a good point guard with Shea Gilders Alexander to play off of. They play a really fun brand of offense, and then they really get after it on defense. And we see, I've seen Mark Degnault like ream guys for not making the right rotations on defense. And yep. so I, I think it would be a good environment for him. I think it would actually give him a chance. Uh, yep. There are other places that worry me a little bit. I'd worry a little bit if Cleveland really loved him. Uh, I I worry that Orlando maybe has too many of the same type of guy, and maybe he's just not going to be better than some of these like Chuma Okiki type of players. Like, I just don't know if he can get past those guys in the rotation initially, and then what happens to him? So there's to me there's just concern for his career as to where he lands. Like if if Toronto somehow fell in love with him, you'd be like like sigh of relief, like okay, like I I believe he will be all right. Like he will yeah. land on his feet in Toronto, but uh, I just. I also get the feeling that Toronto's not going to love him, that they'd rather have more of a finished product than what he is, or maybe they just like other guys better. Yeah, like Toronto might like other guys better, and frankly, I like other guys better at number four for them. Uh, Sure. Having said that, it's hard to imagine a better circumstance. You know, Masai Ujiri, you know, obviously runs the Giants about the program. Yeah, outstanding. um, You know, I I think would really be able to hold uh, Jonathan Kaminga accountable, along with the veteran presences there and everything like that. Taylor made fit, obviously. Um, Orlando, from a roster perspective, they do need a wing scorer, which is what Jonathan Kaminga projects as, it, it, mm-hmm. his ceiling, right? As a guy that can go get a bucket and can do so from the wing. And you know, you can throw the ball to him at the end of the shot clock and he can maybe get an interesting shot. Um, yep. You know, the, the, co- the comparison that's come up a few times is Jalen Green, whenever I've talked to NBA teams. I don't, think he's as explosive athletically as what Jalen Green is, or as fluid mm. athletically as what Jalen Green is, or Jalen Brown, or Jalen Brown, I'm sorry. Um, there are too many Jalens now in the NBA. So many and Rose. this draft is not going to help your cause here. No, it's not. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't really quite see him as reaching the level that Jalen Brown has in yeah. his career already. Yeah. Uh, you know, it it's just hard. Like, I think Oklahoma City would work because, again, like you said, 
really, really developmentally inclined. Uh, it's, you know, th that's, that's the one that makes sense to me. They also, depending on what position you want to call, like say Pokashevsky, like they, they do have a need for yep. a wing shot creator. Um, yep. No doubt. You know, next to Shea, you know, you'd say Poku slides down to the four and the five, um, you know, putting Kuminga at the three, four. I, I think that's a that's a fit that makes sense to me. Um, do, do I think there's a chance that the Thunder like other guys better? Maybe. We'll see. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of teams in that range that could use like a real wing shot creator uh, that Jonathan Kuminga presents as. I, I will say, like, I, I think his the difference between his ceiling and floor is pretty high. Like, or it's pretty wide, maybe is the better way to put it. Uh, you could tell me he ends up, like, very similar to Jeff Green, where he is, like, more of a, you know, ends up on minimum contracts and, you know, has to work to become, like, a super high-level shooter. And sure. um, his athleticism, he's a really good athlete, but doesn't always translate that athleticism in a functional way. Um, just a, a fascinating player for a, a number of uh, reasons. But if it comes together and, and he can really shoot the ball at, at a certain point, especially as a pull-up guy, you know, I, I think there are all-star level outcomes for him. Um, yeah. you know, not Again, I consider this more of a four-person draft than like a five or six-person draft, which is kind of what some people have said. I think that you know, all of Cade Cunningham, Jalen Suggs, Evan Mobley, and Jalen Green uh, are just a bit of a level ahead of Jonathan Kaminga for me. But uh, Jonathan Kaminga is a really high level prospect. And I think that uh, some team is going to be really happy with getting a chance to develop him come draft night.